volleyball, basketball, collecting pennies from around the world, um, bird watching, snowboarding, skiing. What do all these things have in common? They're all activities we continually take part in as they bring joy or happiness to us. They're all what we call hobbies. Really, anything can be your hobby, though. It doesn't have to be just those examples, though. That would provide quite the undiverse world. Um, but anything can really be a hobby, as long as you dedicate enough time to it and are truly passionate and enjoy doing it. Personally, however, I'm pretty sporadic when it comes to hobbies. I find myself jumping rather quickly from one hobby to the other and not having too much sustained interest in any specific hobby. So I wanted to take this opportunity to, to find out why this happened to me. And it was if there was any possible way to solve it. So I embarked on a journey. I went scouring throughout the web for people with similar stories, similar experiences, um, and looked at what they thought was the underlying cause. And maybe I'd find a solution to the problem. A certain specific user that stood out to me was someone that said that they were a fast learner, someone that would learn the ropes rather quickly um, for that certain hobby or interest. And once they started getting to the more complex things, they didn't really have the passion or motivation to keep going because they went through the basics so quickly. They didn't garner a love for that passion. Well, I wouldn't really call it a passion at that point, right? Another thing they stated that stood out to me was that they held themselves up to high expectations and when, it could they meet, and when they couldn't meet them, they were disappointed and unmotivated. I sympathized with this. Whether I'm a fast learner is uh, up to debate and depending who you ask, they might answer differently. But something that I know as a fact is that I hold myself up to high expectations. High expectations that when I can't meet, I'm disappointed in myself and unmotivated to keep on trying. When I thought of this, I recall the situation that happened a couple of years ago. Um, around 2018, we could say. Um, my family and I were in the US and I wanted to buy a piano. A piano to me had always been the perfect instrument. Um, not only because of the way it was played, but because it could really play any different, it could play any genre of music you wanted to with it. Um, it was like the ultimatum of all the instruments, uh, at least in my eyes. So we bought a piano, uh, and a bit after, through a bit of trouble in customs, we arrived back to Argentina. Uh, it was late at night, uh, and we could say around midnight, and I wanted to set the piano up immediately, right? But, you know, everyone was kind of tired and exhausted. Um, so let's just say that um, they were very exhausted by the time they got to sleep, uh, and a bit annoyed. Maybe a bit is an understatement. Anyway, the next day, the piano was already set up, so I immediately started practicing. It was still the holidays, there was no other complications to resolve, so I just started playing. And the basics, again, I learned them rather quickly, uh, and it was really fun. And I was getting the hang of playing with one hand and playing with the other. Uh, but after all that fun part, um, I came across a problem. I came across a plateau. I couldn't play with both hands at the same time. This was a problem that I couldn't fix. Regardless of how many times I tried over and over again, regardless of how many hours I put into it, I just couldn't pass that barrier. I couldn't pass that obstacle. And again, I hold myself up to expectations, so when I couldn't meet them, I was unmotivated. And to this day, the piano sits and collects dust, only occasionally being played. Um, with one or both hands synchronized, never unsynchronized. Another similar experience I had dates a couple years prior to that. Um, I don't know the specific year, but just imagine maybe 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. Uh, we were once again out in a foreign country um, and we walked past a sports store. And uh, as I always have brilliant ideas, I decided, hey, let's buy a bow and arrow, right? My parents, who were walking beside me at the time, looked at me uh, very scornfully and with eyes of, 
Disappointment, kind of. I would assume so. Something along those lines. Yeah, I think that fits the bill. Anyway, uh, after buying the bow and arrow, reluctantly, by my parents, um, this time we definitely had troubles in customs, for obvious reasons. Uh, we made it back to Argentina. Uh, this time my parents could sleep soundly knowing we arrived midday uh, and they didn't need to set up anything. But of course this was in the past, so they would have known the trouble that would come their way in the future. Anyway, this time the experience was a bit different. There wasn't any distinct obstacle I had to cross. After sort of learning the basics of the bow and arrow, there wasn't much more to learn because 